hi guys it's me professor d and welcome back to my channel on this video i'm going to be covering peds and to be more specific i'm going to be covering toddlers or as i lovingly love to call them tiny terrorists because that's what the hell they are but anyway before we get into it guys if you haven't done so already please be sure to like and subscribe below make sure you press that red notification button so you'll be notified every time a new video is released so without any further ado guys let's get started first question what are the psychosocial developmental tasks of toddlerhood a development of a conscience b a recognition of sex differences c ability to get along with age mates or D, ability to withstand delayed gratification. And I'll give you a moment to think of your answer. Okay, when it comes to the toddlers, the biggest struggles that they have is what? D, ability to withstand delayed gratification. When they want something, they want it when? Now, right? The worst thing you can ever say to a toddler is wait. They don't know how to wait. So um, look at, let's look at the wrong choices. A, a development of a conscious, conscience. B, recognition of sex differences. C, ability to get along with age mates. Those three things we see more in the preschool child, okay? So when that child is four, five, that's where we see those, but not in those toddler stages, which is one to three, okay? A parent of an eight-month-old tells a nurse that the child says no to everything and has rapid mood swings. If scolded, the child shows anger and then immediately wants to be held. What is the nurse's best interpretation of this behavior? A, this is normal behavior for the child's age. B, this is unusual behavior for the child's age. C, the child is not effectively coping with stress. Or D, the child is showing the need for more attention. And you remember what I called the, um, excuse me, the toddlers, right? I called them tiny terrorists. So the correct answer, guys, is age. This is normal for their age. Let's go back to the question. Let's see what this toddler is doing. They're saying no. When they're at the toddler age, they like to test their boundaries. They like to test their limits. And that's actually how they also learn about their environment as well. So even if they do want something, <coughs> excuse me, they'll display what we know to be as a negativism where they're saying no, no, no. No. You know the toddlers, all right? So they say no to everything. They have a rapid mood swings. One second they're happy and the tiniest little thing and they do what? Start to cry and they're angry. If scolded, they show anger and then immediately they want to be comforted or they want to hug. That is normal for the toddler's age. Two toddlers are playing in the sandbox when one suddenly grabs a toy from the other child. What is the best interpretation of this behavior? A, this is uh, typical behavior because toddlers are aggressive. B, this is typical behavior because toddlers are egocentric. C, toddlers should know that sharing toys is expected of them. D, toddlers should have the cognitive ability to know right from wrong. And the correct answer is B, they're egocentric. They can only view situations from their point of view, what they want, when they want it. They don't have, cognitively speaking, they don't have the ability to think from another's point of view and to say to, to themselves, well, how would um, I feel if somebody did that to me? Or how would the Sammy feel right now that I took Sammy's toy? They don't have the ability to think um, in that sense. They are very egocentric. The way that they think revolves around them. Okay, so that's the correct answer. And something else I want to bring to your attention with this question, I want you uh, to remember because, and Clex likes to ask about this, and if you're taking peds right now, test questions, they love asking about this as well. Um, the toddlers, they're in what, what type of play? Parallel. So in infancy, they were having solitary play. They were playing by themselves. You give them a, a rattle and they just 
shake that rattle by themselves. But when you get the toddlers, one to three, they have parallel play where they're playing with a toy, they're playing with a truck or they're playing with a doll and they're playing next to another child that's playing with their toy, but they're not playing together not yet. It's not associative, it's just parallel. So the toddler has moved from solitary play, which was infancy, to now parallel play. Okay, next question. Oh, guys, um... <laughs> By the way, if you've been following me for a while, you know that um, this is actually the first time I've ever worn glasses um, for my videos. I wear glasses just to drive. I'm nearsighted. However, these questions that I'm covering on this video, I don't know why I made them so tiny, but I did. And I'm cheap with my ink. I didn't want to reprint them. So I put on my glasses so I can read the questions and choices for you. Okay. All right. All right. Next question. Which statement about toilet training is correct? A, a bladder training is usually accomplished before bowel training. B, wanting to please the parent helps motivate the child to use the toilet. C, watching older siblings use the toilet confuses the child. D, children must be forced to sit on the toilet when first learning. And I'll give you a moment to think of your answer. And the correct answer is B, wanting to please the parent helps to motivate the child to use the toilet. At the toddler stage, um, they have their times where they're what? People pleasers. They want to hear mommy and daddy say, good job, I'm so proud of you. So that is a motivation for them. Now let's look at our wrong answer choices. A, bladder training is usually accomplished before bowel training. That is false, okay? Uh, bowel training is usually accomplished before bladder training, number one. And number two, who um, gets uh, potty trained quicker, girls or boys? Girls, okay? Choice C, watching older siblings use the toilet is confusing to the child. That is false. Um, watching their older siblings, the, the toddlers that actually have older siblings, that they watch the older siblings, they tend to potty train quicker because the older siblings act as a role model, okay? Choice D, children must be forced to sit on the toilet. Don't ever force them because forcing them will only make the problem worse and it will take longer for that child to be um, potty trained. You never want to uh, train a child in a threatening or aggressive way. Which characteristic best describes the gross motor skills of a 24 month old child? This is a famous question on NCLEX guys. A, skips, B, ride tricycles, C, broad jumps, or D, walks up and down stairs. And the correct answer is D, walks up and down stairs. The two-year-old can do this. Choices A, B, and C, we see this in what? The three-year-old, okay? Next question. In the clinic waiting room, a nurse observes a parent showing an 18-month-old child how to make a tower out of blocks. In this situation, the nurse should recognize the fact about this task. A, blocks at this age are used primarily for throwing. B, toddlers are too young to imitate the behaviors of others. C, toddlers are capable of building a tower of blocks. Or D, toddlers are too young to build a tower of blocks. And the correct answer is C, toddlers are capable of building a tower of blocks. Um, at 18 months old, we expect them to be able to uh, build a tower of three to four blocks. So let's look at our wrong answer choices. A, blocks at this age are used primarily for throwing. No. Before about a year and a half or 12 to 18 months before that, well, not even, yeah, a year and a half, not even 12 to 18 months. Before a year and a half, what would they do with the blocks? They would just throw it. But once they hit that about year and a half mark, they're looking at others and they they start to imitate, okay? And we expect them to be able to build a tower of, like I said, three to four blocks. Um, what was the next choice? Uh, B, oh, toddlers are too young to imitate others. Absolutely not. That's what they're doing now by building the block. And they showed us that... Listen, guys, nobody should have chosen that as a choice because in the question, let's go back to the question. It says that the parent is showing an 18 month old how to make a tower. 
okay? Anyway, choice D, toddlers are too young to build a tower of blocks, and we know that's not true. We expect them at eight, 18 months to be able to build a tower of about uh, three to four blocks. And we expect them to start being able to build a tower around 15 months, okay? Not before. So 15, 18 months, we expect them to be able to do that. The parents of a newborn say that their toddler hates the baby and suggested that we put the baby in the trash so the truck could take him away. What is the nurse's best response to the parent's concern? A, let's see if we can figure out why the toddler hates the new baby. B, that's a strong statement to come from such a small child. C, let's refer your child to counseling to work this hatred out. It is not a normal response. Or D, this is a, a normal response to the birth of a sibling. Let's look at ways to deal with this. And the correct answer is D, this is a normal response of the sibling. Remember, guys, we're talking about toddlers. Couple things that we know about toddlers. Number one, they are egocentric. Everything is about them, and they can only see things from their point of view, okay? Number two, toddlers love routine. They are very ritualistic. If you ever go to a daycare, right, what are you going to see at the preschool center or the, uh, the area where you have the one-year-olds, the two-year-olds, the three-year-olds? What are you going to see? They have breakfast at the same time. They have nap at the same time. They go to recess at the same time. Day in and day out, they do the same things. Why? Because they thrive off of uh, um, that ritualism, okay? Doing the same thing all the time. That, makes, that gives them a sense of stability in their environment, okay? So here you have a toddler who's had the stability. Now there's this new baby that, number one, remember, they're egocentric. It's all about them. You got this baby that's taking away, or they feel that the baby's taking away their love, their attention, affection from the parents. And because of baby, now their whole routine's being messed up because... But can babies go on a schedule? No. The baby eats when they want to eat. The baby poops when they want to poop. So this is very normal. This is a normal response of the toddler. So you're going to let the parents know that this is normal. And what I love about this answer choice even goes further. It doesn't only say, oh, well, this is normal. It also says, let's look at ways to deal with this. So you're letting the parents know that this is normal. And then you're doing what? Providing education. Okay? Now let's look at our wrong answer choices. A. Let's look to see if we can figure out what. You know why that toddler said that. We don't need to figure out why the toddler doesn't like the new baby. Stop. So we know it's not A. B, that's a strong statement to come from a child. That is a strong statement, but it's a normal statement of the toddler. We know why, right? And then choice C, let... Let's refer your child to counseling to work this. First of all, first of all, you wouldn't be the one doing the referral anyway. Who'd be doing the referral? The physician or the nurse practitioner, okay? So the correct answer is D. A toddler's parents ask the nurse for suggestions on dealing with temper tantrums. What intervention is the most appropriate recommendation? A, punish the child with an age-appropriate punishment. B, leave the child alone until the tantrum is over. C, uh, ignore the behavior provided that is not injurious. Or D, uh, explain to the child that this is wrong. And I'll give you a moment to think of your answer. Let me move this a little bit. Okay. And the correct answer, guys, is... See, you're going to ignore the behavior provided that it's not injurious. You're going to ignore the behavior as long as um, you're not putting that child in a position to be injured. So if you're at the mom is at the grocery store and the child wants a box of cereal and the mom says, no, this is the cereal we're going to get. And the child goes, ah! And they throw themselves on the ground and they have a temper tantrum and they're screaming and everybody's walking by looking at that child like, oh, what's the best thing to do? Ignore that child that's having the tamper, the tantrum. Don't go to the next aisle, but just walk a little far away where you could keep watch, watching that child in the peripheral and just look at other, you know, whatever is on the aisle. Why? We don't reward bad behavior. 
we reward good behavior. And once the child stops acting up and behaves age appropriate, you tell that child, I'm so proud of you. You're, you're, um, you're behaving so well, but you don't give attention and you don't reward bad behavior. So let's look at our wrong answer choices. Um, a, punish a child with an age appropriate punishment. This is not going to be beneficial because of their age. Okay, that's not beneficial. B, leave the child alone until the tantrum's over. No, why? Because you leave them alone, they can injure themselves. You wanna ignore the behavior, but you don't wanna leave them alone, okay? Um, toddlers are the second group, highest group of death rate among age groups. So you know how you have infancy, you have toddlers, you have preschool, you have school age, you have adolescents, you have young adults, you have middle adults, you have old adults, right? So the number one age group that um, dies from uh, injuries are the adolescents. Because remember the adolescents, that's when they're starting to establish their independence. That's when they get their driver's license, okay? So it's adolescence is number one, but right after adolescence, it's these guys, the toddlers, because they're learning about their environment, right? And so, and they love bodies of water, so they'll see a pool or a lake and they'll just go in, or they're learning about their environment and they might stick a fork in the, what do you call it, in the socket and electrocute themselves. So you don't want to leave them alone. You want to ignore the behavior, but don't leave them alone. And then choice D, explain that this is wrong. They are a toddler. You are wasting your time. That is not beneficial. Okay. So what you want to do is ignore the behavior, but make sure that you can still keep an eye on them so they don't injure themselves. A parent asks the nurse about how to respond how to respond to negativism in toddlers. What is the most appropriate recommendation? A, punish the child. B, provide more attention. C, ask the child to always, ask the child not to always say no. Or D, reduce the opportunities for a no answer. And the correct answer is D, reduce the opportunities for a no answer. So don't say to the child, would you like to have breakfast this morning? What's the answer gonna be even if they're hungry? No! Don't do that. Say to the child, this morning, would you like to have an apple or a banana? And they'll say, oh, I want an apple, I want a banana. And when you do that, you're helping them to also establish a sense of control, that they have some kind of control over their environment, okay? Um, a, B, and C does not work. You have to remember the reason the children are having, the toddlers are having negativism is because they're testing their boundaries. This is how they're learning about their environment and you don't want to take that away from them. So A, B, and C is wrong. D is correct because you're going to help them um, establish that sense of control while decreasing the negativism. The parents of a two-year-old tells the nurse that they're concerned because a toddler has started to use baby talk since the arrival of their new baby. The nurse should recommend which intervention to the parents. A, ignore the baby talk. B, explain to the toddler that baby talk is for babies. C, tell the toddler frequently, you're a big kid now. Or D, encourage the toddler to practice more advanced patterns of speech. And the correct answer is A, you're going to ignore the baby talk. We do not reward bad behavior. Now, when the child speaks appropriately for their age, you're going to compliment them. You're going to tell them that they're doing a good job. Um, but when they're doing that baby talk, what are they really doing? They're regressing. Those are That's a symptom of regression. Why do children regress? Because there may be some underlying anxiety fear or stress that they're dealing with. And of course they're dealing with stress. They got a new baby in the house. And so now they're questioning what is their position in the family? You know, do my parents still love me because they're just paying all their, all this attention is going to the new baby. All of these things are very stressful to the toddler. And so we tend to see this regressive behavior. A father tells the nurse that his toddler wants the same plate and cup used at every meal, even if they go to a restaurant. The nurse should explain that this is a result of what factor? A, a sign that the child is spoiled. B, a way to exert unhealthy control. C, regression common at this age. 
Or D, ritualism common at this age. And you guys should all know the answer to this because I talked about this a couple of questions ago. The correct answer is D, ritualism, which is common at this age. They want the same thing every single time. Even their favorite food. If you do not present their favorite food in the same way that they like that favorite food presented, they won't want to eat it. So their favorite food is spaghetti and meatballs. And they are used to you putting the spaghetti on the plate, then the, the spaghetti sauce, then the meatballs on top. God forbid you switch that up and you mix it all together and give it to the child. It's still their favorite dish, right? The consistency, nothing's changed about it, but the presentation is different and they will freak out. Why? Because they are ritualistic. That's what gives them a sense of control of their environment, um, stability, excuse me. That's what gives them the sense of stability in their environment. Developmentally, most children at age 12 months demonstrate what behavior? A, use a spoon adeptly, excuse me. B, relinquish the bottle voluntarily. C, eat the same food as the rest of the family. Or D, reject all solid foods in preference of the bottle. And the correct answer is C, eat the same food as the rest of the family. They're only 12 months old, so whatever they're being offered, that, that, that's what they're going to eat. They're going to eat the same foods as the rest of the family, okay? Now, let's look at our wrong answer choices. A, use a spoon, ad, I cannot say that word for the life of me, but ad, adeptly, which means to use a spoon very well. I don't know why they couldn't just say that, but anyway, use a spoon adeptly. We usually see this when the toddler's about 18 months old, not 12 months old. That's too young. They're still struggling to use a spoon um, well. Choice two, relinquish the bottle voluntarily. No, 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 no. There's a reason why we call it weaning off the bottle because that's exactly what you have to do for, the, for that 12-month-old, uh, right? Remember, 12 months is a huge a milestone, right? That's where they get their one-year-old shots. The most shots are going to get the one-year-old shots. That's when um, they go from bottle to sippy cup. That's when they go from the breast milk or the commercial milk to whole milk. Because remember, that fat that's in the whole milk, that baby needs that. They're growing and they're growing very quickly. That's an age where they have a rapid rate of growth and they need that fat from the cow's milk, right? So they do not give up that bottle easily. That's why it's called weaning that where you start warning the parent. At 10 months, you start warning the parents, hey, the child's going to be 12 months soon. At 12 months, he or she's a big boy, big girl. No more bottle, sippy cup, right? No more commercial formula, gallon milk, okay? Um, so B is wrong. And then D reject all foods in the pre preference of a bottle. Um, that's false because yes, they prefer their bottle. That's why you have to wean, wean them off of the bottle, but they're very interested in food as well. Remember, um, we start introducing solid foods, what, four to six months, right? And you start with what? Rice cereal and, um, non, um, allergenic foods, foods that, um, we know, don't usually cause allergies. So we start with the rice cereal four to six months. They are very interested in food. So they're, food, they're interested in the taste of food. They're interested in the consistency, what it looks like, what it smells like. So D is wrong as well. The correct answer is C, eat the same food as the rest of the family. An appropriate recommendation in preventing tooth decay, <coughs> excuse me, in preventing tooth decay in young children would be which intervention? A, substitute raisin for candy. B, serve sweets after a meal. C, use honey or molasses instead of refined sugar. Or D, serve sweets between meals. And the correct answer is B, serve sweets after meals. Why? Because if you do it after the meal, right after the child has a meal, they can go do what? Brush their teeth. And that decreases the amount of time that that sugar is going to be sitting on the teeth causing cavities, causing tooth decay. The other choices that are wrong, let's look at them. A, substituting raisins for candy, use honey or molasses, um, serve sweets between meals. 
raisin, honey, molasses, all of those are what? Um, karyogenic. What does that mean? They cause cavities, right? So um, those three choices will not help to decrease tooth decay. But serving it after meals, that can help because right after the meals, you have the child do what? Brush their teeth. What is the leading cause of death during the toddler period? And everyone should know this answer. I accidentally gave you the answer. So A, injuries, B, infectious disease, C, congenital disorders, or D, childhood diseases. And the correct answer, guys, is injuries. That's the number one cause of death in the toddler period, right? Right after number one, interestingly enough though, right after number one, which is your injuries for the toddlers, the second leading cause of death for toddlers are congenital diseases, diseases that that uh, child was born with. What's the rationale for the nurse, excuse me, what is the rationale for the nurse recommends to parents that peanuts are not a good snack food for toddlers? A, they're low in nutritive value. B, they're high in sodium. C, they cannot be entirely diagnosed, diagnosed. <laughs> they cannot be entirely digested. Or D, they can easily be aspirated. What do you think the answer is? The correct answer is D, they can easily be aspirated, okay? That's one of the reasons we hate peanuts for toddlers. Another reason we hate peanuts for toddlers, um, many um, young children that have allergies, many of them tend to have peanut allergies, so we're very careful with that. But as far as it comes to, let me go back to the question, we'll see what this says. Um, not being a good snack, let's say they're not allergic to peanuts. Why is peanuts still not a good snack? Um, aspiration, they can choke. Peanuts, they're, they're hard. Dried um, peas, um, meat, hot dogs, especially, and I, I talked about this in a couple other videos, you know, the toddlers love hot dogs, right? But when you give them the hot dogs, you need to cut them up in triangles. Don't let them stay in that circle shape because it can get lodged in their windpipe, okay? So anything like dried beads, nuts, hard, any hard foods, or meats that are hard to chew, it, it can cause choking, the child can aspirate. The parents of a 16 month old ask, what is the best way to keep our toddler from getting into our medicines at home? The nurse should provide which advice? By the way, this is a famous NCLEX question as well. A, all medicine should be locked securely, to, securely away. B, the medicine should be placed high in cabinets. C, Chris just needs to be taught not to touch medicines. Or D, medicine should not be kept in the homes of small children. And the correct answer is A, it needs to be locked away. Okay? That is the number one way to prevent the children from getting into medicine, to, to getting into chemicals. Let's look at our other choices. B, the medicine should be placed in high cabinets. What do we know about toddlers? They start to do what? Climb right? They will climb higher than you ever expected them to. So that is incorrect. C, they just need to be taught not to touch medicines. Okay, let's see how that works for you. No, that's not effective. They're children. They're very curious about their environment. D, medicine should not be kept in the home of small children. That's just not feasible. So what is important, and this is what you're going to teach a parent, is to make sure that they have it locked away. Okay, guys, and we are down to our last question. The mother of an 18-month-old child's concerned because the child's appetite has decreased. Which is the best response for the nurse to make to the mother? A, it is important for your toddler to eat three meals a day and nothing in between. B, it's not unusual for toddlers to eat less during this developmental stage. C, be sure to increase your child's milk consumption, which will improve nutrition. Or D, giving your child a multivitamin supplement will increase your toddler's appetite. And the correct answer is B, it's not unusual for toddlers to eat less during this developmental stage. And here's why. When they hit about 18 months, what do we know about um, them developmentally speaking? 
the growth starts to slow down. And so their requirements for nutrition is not as much. And so that's why they're not as hungry. But what you do want to do is continuing to continue to offer small, right? Because they don't need that much food, small, but frequent meals. And you got to remember they're toddlers. So what? They're on the run. They're so excited about learning about their environment. So they're not staying still. They're always all over the place. That's why you're giving them finger food for snacks because they're not going to want to sit still to eat. You want to give them small, but frequent meals, offer them small, but frequent meals and offer them nutritious snacks they have to have snacks in between their three meals okay so a a it's important for your toddler to eat three meals a day and nothing in between between that's absolutely false you need to be offering them nutritious snacks in between their meals choice um c be sure to increase your child's milk cons cons <laughs> consumption which will improve nutrition no so guys, when it comes to the toddlers, they love their milk. We love that they love their milk, but they should not be getting more than 24 ounces a day. Okay. Because what is something that we know about cow's milk and we know it's cow's milk because look at the child's age, 18 months. So they're not drinking commercial milk anymore. They're drinking gallon milk. One thing, as much as we love the cow's milk, we, it offers the fat that they need for that growth, but, um, it slows down the absorption of iron. All right. And so if that child's drinking too much milk, it can cause them to have iron deficiency anemia. And that's why we don't give them more than 24 ounces in a day. So that's wrong. And then the last choice, giving your child a multivitamin will increase their appetite. First of all, you're a nurse. So you're not going to recommend them to take a medication, even something over the counter. That's number one. And number two, even more importantly, that's not true. Multivitamins, um, yeah, they're a great thing. You want to give multivitamin to your child, but it doesn't stimulate appetite. So that's wrong. So the correct answer is um, this is not unusual for toddlers to eat less during the developmental stage. Guys, thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope that you learn more about the toddlers than before you started this video, guys. I read every single one of your comments and I wanna say thank you so much. I'm reading your words of encouragement. Um, the questions that you have, I go ahead, I answer it in the comments. Um, I have a long list. I know you guys have different subjects that you want me to cover. I'm only one person though, but I'm trying my best and I promise I will get to it. Uh, please don't forget, if you haven't done so already, go ahead, like, and subscribe below, press the notification button, and please share my videos with anyone you know that would help. Classmates, if you have a coworker at work that's studying for their boards, please share my video. I want to tell you guys thank you so much because I never thought I was going to see the day that I was finally going to hit a thousand subscribers. My uh, son who watches you know, the Fortnite and the gamers on YouTube, he laughed at me because I was so excited for my measly 1000, but that means a lot to me. I'm so happy and just grateful to know that I'm helping one person. Guys, thank you so much. And I'll see you next time on my next video.